Anyone who knows me at all will know that Memoir 44 is probably, um, I have to say, my favourite go-to board game. Uh, it might only be a two-player game, but I enjoy it immensely and pride myself in having tracked down pretty much everything that is in print for the game. Sadly, Days of Wonder, under the umbrella of Asmodee, it's rare now that we see much new coming, let alone restocks of the things that have been in the past. But have quite a pile of it amassed and enjoy it immensely. So when Andrew Torrens comes along to the club and announces that he has bought this by Richard Borg, I am of course interested to see it. I was aware of it. Now it's not a case that this one missed me and passed me by and I knew nothing about it, but it was one of those games that when it came along just wasn't a good time for me to, to be buying into another game. So Andrew obliged and bought everything that they made for it. But Andrew's one of those guys who's a lot on life and doesn't always get to the gaming table. So it has yet to see the light of day. But whenever he turns around and says, well, Andy, you know, it's World War I Memoir 44. That's me sold on it. Job done. Uh, I don't even need to show you people. And as far as I'm concerned, it's awesome. Go and get it. Bye. Only joking. Um, what we will do though is we'll take a little look at what's in the boxes uh, to let you get a, a table down view on the contents. Um, even from a casual quick look, there's a few differences aside from the fact that it's World War One. One of the most notable, most notable ones for me, of course, is that tanks. Yeah, huge, huge tanks, and very, very detailed huge tanks at that. These haven't been out. I don't know if they're sealed. Or sellotape, they, they, it appears to just be some kind of sellotape. I'm sure Andrew wouldn't have given it to me if he didn't expect me to pop, pop one of them out. Sticky, it'll seal again, it'll be fine. Um, but yeah, World War One tanks, they're class. Wonder the turrets move. Let, let's let's not try and make them move, shall we not? But they've got their, their little German markings and all on them and the little guns bristling from them. And they're screwed together as well. These these are quite good. Plastic, but there's there's a weight to them. Um, so yeah, those those are cute. I think it's French tanks here as well. French tanks. This is an expansion for it. Uh, not a core game thing at all. There's two different things in here. Oh, these are kind of... Oh, they're really stuck in there. Oh, come out. Come on. Oh, nothing broke. Yeah. That's that's an odd beast, isn't it? I'm I'm not big and anyway clued up on World War One, so you know somebody else can comment with what these things actually are. Um, but they're they're pretty, they're very well done. Um, I think from what Andrea said, they they last a bit longer on the table than the tanks in Memoir Forty Four, so presumably that's why there's been a bit more time. Uh, and effort and money or it could just be that they have to make sure because this isn't uh, Days of Wonder this is Plastic Soldier Company um, could be just hey we can make big tanks and show off because that's what we do for a living um, or it could just be to, to even more differentiate it from uh, Memoir 44 I don't really care it's shiny minis now these are again sort of the 172nd scale Germans Little chap with his luger out, the classical throwing a stick grenade, walking along with a big machine gun. So they're actually different little people. Infantry running, they're on round bases. Okay, and I think there's, I think there's a guy feeding ammunition here or a radio operator. No, it's an ammunition dude. Not down with two little ammo crates. That's cute. Um, what Andrew has told me is that in the first generation of this, the miniatures are quite brittle plastic ones. There's a lot of stuff in here as well. Yeah. Oh, you can even hear that. So they brought out the, the first generation of these hard little plastic minis. Uh, nothing looks wrong with them. Um, other than people didn't like it, apparently. Uh, I think there's Germans and British in here, yeah. 
This guy's manning a, a Lewis gun and things like that there. Looks like a Lewis gun. And then the second generation of them, it was back to this kind of softer plastic, presumably a little bit more secure. So yeah, looking in here, the, I know Andrew said this out for, for a look-see at home and whatnot, but you know, the recognizable hexagonal tiles are in here. Granted, most of these appear to have trench works on them. And there's a few hills and little villages. And then there's barbed wire and craters. I'm not seeing a board yet. Deck of cards, the Great War. Victory tokens or unit markers for allies and axis. I don't think a turn counter. Dice with explosion, infantry symbol, skull, and the flag. So I think we're, we're, we are looking pretty much at the, the Memoir 44 mechanic, which uh, is Richard's kind of... I'm wondering where the board is and I'm holding it. So again, we've got a double-sided board. Whoa! Big board. We love big boards. Can you see me, Mum? So yeah, we've got the all green, day one. And then we've got the all brown, day 45. I'm just saying that, I'm just, you know. But yeah, that fits in with the the photographs that one has seen of this uh, awful period. And the rule book. We've got a couple of reference cards there. Battlefield soldiers, machine guns, mortars, special personnel bombers, reserve artillery, close range, 3211, So a similar sort of mechanic, move one, uh, when unit moves, no battle, move one, unit, no battle, move one, second move, no battle for infantry. And the back here, we have the tile breakdown. So we've got countryside, forest, hills, buildings, building rubble, trenches, shell craters, wire and mine craters. Uh, the effect of unit moving in and target unit on hex, the modifiers and line of sight. So familiar territory there. These are for holding your cards, little MDF card holder, which he hasn't built, because he doesn't build them. Rules and scenarios. And the artwork and all is exemplary, very evocative. There's been a little bit of assembly for the plastic figures. And object of the game, setting up no man's land movement. Cards, section cards. You know, uh, yeah, I can see where it's coming from. If if you've played Memoir 44, it's not going to be a huge learning curve to jump to this, even in just a couple of pages that I've read there. It's, it's familiar territory. There is like a compass for artillery and where you dice roll is where that artillery drifts off to. And then we're through to scenarios. A lot of them obviously trench based and looking quite familiar by and large there on those. Scenario 16. So 16 scenarios in the core rulebook. Okay, this is all new to me and getting getting to sort of see this uh, aspect of it. Um, I think there is, yeah, there's more scenarios in this one. Uh, well, we're up to scenario 59. Now, that might make sense because I think they've done some stuff online and then there has been two expansions. There is a tank expansion. Whoa! Yep, so we've got Nor rulebook and scenarios here. Yeah, there we go. We're up to scenario 23, 29, 31, 35, 39, 40. And that, he hasn't been through this because this, there's rivers and bunkers starting up here and walls in this one. Ooh. Ooh, ooh. That's pretty. These almost feel like metal. It's like a die cast feel to it. German tanks. Because right, those were captured tanks in the first one, sorry. That's very swish. Big open box for them though. I can see where you need the phone. Two. 
And then there's allied tanks in here as well. My boxes are sliding down the table. They're just going to disappear on me. So there's three allied, three German. And then artillery pieces. Gosh, what's in here? Whippet tanks. This pack contains three 1-100 scale assembled painted British World War I Whippet tanks for the Command and Colours, the Great War board game tank expansion pack. Gosh, that's quite nice. Get a better look at that shortly for you. It's just, it's just pretty. Just want to run away now. I wonder what he noticed if I if I left the building and didn't tell him. Just disappear, never to be seen again. It's not worth it. He's a good lad. Wouldn't want to steal on him. Uh, very nice. Yeah, and then he hasn't opened this, but he's given us permission to open the Great War French Army expansion. Um, Seventy-five plastic World War One French soldiers, fifty French, British, German specialist personnel figures. 33 double-sided train, 5-sided fortified position and wire markers, 2 double-sided French artillery tokens, 10 double-sided French and German medals, 1 rolled scenario book and 2 special personnel and train summary sheets. Uh, this product is an expansion for the Great War board game, not a standalone game. An original copy of the Great War is required to play. However, it is, it is not a kick in the backside of the same size as the core, so very nice indeed. Yeah. Um, well, we'll do. I know there's some pictures will have crept along the bottom there for you, but we'll we'll give you a bit of a close up look on some of this stuff specifically as well. So I may as well kick off with with a look inside the the one that's not opened. Um, so this is the the French Army expansion. So we get our special personnel reference summary again. Terrain summary. Cool. Our book, and that's in our, another hefty book. There's there's no shortage. What are we what are we at scenario wise in this one? Just jump to this. Scenario 42, 53, 54, 56, 58. And I mean, you know, you can see again the, the similarities, obviously, as expected now, with the, the memoir 44. It's familiar kind of territory for people, but obviously given what we've seen already uh, with a very different twist to it so there's those cards out of the box much more subdued colors there's the the bunker tiles uh, there targeting for the artillery there's the French artillery pieces the double-sided going on again and I think we've two more sheets of those Little farms, ruined farms, and hills, and more trench works. Okay, a lot of lot of void space, but then I think the intention here is again that you can store a lot of the other bits that you've got. And we've got our French and German. This is all just mixed in one bag, as you can tell. Softer plastic, but yeah, you know, no no shyness on the the detail in here again. We have to halt. British. Cool. That's that's very nice. Ammo carrier there. So it's nice in, in this one that there's that variation of the figures. That's uh, an interesting change in that those figures obviously have uh, different roles within it too. What have we got here? Bomber, an elite, hand up guy, engineer, portable flamethrower, heavy weapon loader, heavy weapon loader, uh, machine gun and mortar, so they're different, light machine gun guy, marksman, officer, spotter, nice, forward observer. Okay, cool. 